Yo, Wano Country Anime built different, yo. Wano Country Anime built massively different, yo. Episode 957, I thought was an absolute gem. The animation, the directing, movie levels, they were absolutely outstanding. But here we are back at it again with the latest episode of One Piece, 982, that, yo, yo, that was so damn good, yo. Megumi Shitani, the main director of the episode, has been on fire. She is kicking ass right now. And it is, people are going as far as to say that she is the best One Piece episode director they've ever seen. And I, it, it's hard to, granted, because of Reese bias, but it's hard to say no, I think, in a general sense. Under her watch, you can argue we've seen two of the best animated and directed episodes in the entirety of the series of One Piece. She is on fire, yo. That is undeniable. Fire! As far as I can see, the fandom at this point in time has really been embracing her skills. And Wano Country, the anime, has been, yo, in terms of anime, it's been just amazing. Like, I, I really do wish, I said before a few times, I really do wish I was an anime only watcher for specifically Wano Country. It has been that good. Like, it's a complete shift from prior arcs like Dressrosa or Punk Hazard or Fishman Island, where the manga was the way to go. But in Wano, it's, it's, the anime's just been too damn good. It's been way too damn, over the top! It's been too good. Now, I want to give you my best moments of the episode, but before that, I want to give absolutely some love and some credit to the people that are a part of the episode. It's creation, the core individuals. And also, I will have my reaction up for the episode on the YouTube channel at a later point in time, like later this week, probably. But if you want to see it, the full thing, the full King Caboodle, Patreon. The whole thing is there. Patreon, link in the box below. That being said though, must give credit to, first of all, the screenplay, which is accredited to Ryo Yamazaki. Then we have the art, which is accredited to Gyo Wei Huang. Then you have the main animators for the episode, which there were, yo, there were so many damn good shots. Masahiro Kitazaki, uh, Young C2, I think that's how I say the name, Young C2, who did a lot, who did a lot in this episode. Then you have Jaki Suaki, Heezy Wei, I think that's how I say that name, I'm not too sure. Then we have Keita Saito, and then finally, Rui Yang. These are the main people that I'm aware of that did a lot of the great animated scenes that we see in this outstanding episode of One Piece. And just in a general sense, in, in a general sense, Toei Animation and all the folks involved with the creation of this anime episode, thank you. All right, the One Piece fandom earnestly and truly says thank you for doing a real kick-ass job. Yo, for real, a real, mmm. And, and I'm praying, please. I'm praying that these people are getting paid right. Please, I, I, I don't hear any towing news that these folks are getting paid like three dollars per like a five minute scene. It's like no, 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 please. please. It'll be heartbreaking to have all these amazing scenes and these people are going through hell. <laughs> now that all being said, once again, this episode was absolutely outstanding. In terms of animation, in terms of structure, in terms of pace, from those standpoints, this episode was absolutely fantastic. A guaranteed 10 out of 10 movie, movie quality. Loved it through and through on those fronts, absolutely. I've been saying for some time, now once again, the anime in this arc is just flat out superior than the manga, and I continue to be proven correct. And yes, I know I'm kind of gloating, but at the same time, like, the evidence is there, all right? The evidence is overwhelming. Just look at the chapters for these episodes. Episode 981, 982, and soon, 983, they are completely restructured from the manga chapters of 977 and 978. The ending moment that we get in the episode was in the middle of one of these chapters. 
Well, it smacked down in the middle, and it had nowhere near the same impact. Nowhere near the same impact. Again, if you don't believe me, just reread them. If you're an anime-only watcher, okay, don't do that. But if you're a manga reader, reread those chapters and tell me, tell me, if the pacing and the structure of the anime was inferior to those chapters. Because I think you would agree, hard press. For real, hard press. The natural pace and flow of the anime in this arc, which overall is slower, winds up being much, 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 much better for this arc. And that's not the truth. The only thing, the only thing I could say that from a structure standpoint was maybe better in the manga than the anime was the stuff involving Kaido Sun. My top five favorite scenes for this episode, in no particular order, number one, Queen's Entrance was so freaking good. Massive rave. The best party in the new world. Lights, Den Den Mushi, action. And then before that, the great shift in the tone of the episode after the eye catcher, where it's almost like a movie or a music video. Oh, dude, yo, that... All that stuff before the roll call, I thought was absolutely outstanding. That was so... Good, yo, that, oh, ha, ha! it's true. If Queen was skinny, he'd be way too damn popular. There was one shot of these girls. They were going crazy after seeing Queen. Like they're collapsing, like one girl's bikini's falling off. And then there's some random guy in the back and like, what's going on? Like, what, like he was partying and he's seeing these two freaking out. He's like, uh, hello? That, oh, it was so good. That's the first thing. The second thing. Is a low key scene, but I like it a lot, honestly. When Zoro finds the booze, and then Sanji and Usopp, they're rummaging around, all that stuff. They see Zoro just find the booze, walk away like a weirdo. And then Nami's calling him over, and then Nami's looking at Zoro, like, what the hell is wrong with this guy, yo? Charbus calling him over, like, let's drink, yay! And then Sanji has that cool walk after Usopp. That was, I ain't gonna front, that was a cool walk, and it was really dope, but seeing Luffy run in the background as Nami's calling him. Because Zoro's going to drink all the sake. To me, the East Blue vibes are strong. There was a lot of East Blue vibes that I felt in the episode. And that was, I think, the strongest one. Where it was really, really cool seeing like, the East Blue cats just mingling and being together on sync. You can argue a little bit deeper than the rest of the strats. You can argue that. The East Blue vibes, because I like the East Blue. I like, like ever since Bada TA, Bada TA, Arlong Park, um, Log Town. I like the East Blue Saga, alright, for sure. And just seeing that dynamic once again in several parts of the episode, I thought it was really damn good. Really damn wholesome. Absolutely. After that, the Red Hawk lineup. Not the Red Hawk itself. Before the Red Hawk, that lineup where you have on one side, Jinbe, Brooke, and Sanji. On the other side, Zoro, Robin, and Frankie. And then Luffy in the... Oh, that was sexy. Oh, that was sexy, yo. Hey, yo! It's like these are Luffy's top niggas. And we rolled out hard. This whole Tory gate, a few hundred guys, ain't no big deal. We handled this. We trained for this reason. And Jinbei, former Shichibukai. We trained for this for a reason. All right? And it was just cool just seeing that lineup. And Monkey D. Luffy in the middle. It also reminded me of Strong World. When they make their final push on Shiki, and then you have Luffy walking down the middle, yo. Oh. Yo, it was sexy, yo. It reminds me of that Strong World lineup, and that was so damn good. After that, the Red Hawk itself. Oh, that was cool. Oh, that, that was... And the fact that when he does the Red Hawk, this man Luffy in the air feeling himself like big time, big time, big time. And then when he does the Red Hawk, it's like the sun is behind him, which I think was absolutely a reference to Ace's Entei. I think absolutely because the Red Hawk itself is the Fire Fist in name. And then when you see that Red Hawk now look like the Entei, that was... That could be a testament on so many fronts because the Entei, I believe, is also called the Emperor, like Flame Emperor. And Luffy, by some, is considered to be the fifth Emperor of the Sea, and he's doing Ace Technique. We know that Ace was in Wano Country before. Like, there's so many different things you can gauge from that. If you want to go really deep into it, probably not. Like, I'd probably go, like, a bit extra. Fair enough, fine. But that was dope as all hell. That was dope as all hell. And then finally, the best scene, the best scene in the episode, I'd argue, the mugs. 
not Luffy's mug, even though that was pretty, that was great, that was excellent, with the image of Chaden leading the samurai, no, no, it was the Straw Hats mug, when they dropped their mugs, right, and you have all those shots of the Straw Hats, and then you have Luffy shot, and then they sail off to chase after the samurai company, and we see their mugs left on the ground, we'll party after it's all said and done. Oh, man, it was. I do wonder if they're going to go back for those mugs, but I have my doubts. I do have my doubts. It was just really, really dope. That was a really excellent shot. That was a really good direction choice to have them do that, which honestly gives you um, post Town vibes. When the East Blue Originals, when they were going to go to the Grand Line. You have them line up and then kick the barrel down. It, it, it reminds you of those vibes. Real damn did. Like, what we're going to experience now in Onigashima is something so monumental. It's something so story shifting. And it's, ah, damn, yo. That was a really damn good shot. Yo. Again, if folks wanted to say that Megumi Shitani was the best director in One Piece anime history, I think there is a strong claim for that. I think you would say, okay, you know what? Even if the animation wasn't as good, the decision making to restructure a lot of these chapters and blend them in a much more cohesive, much more impactful way and really slow down that pace so we can really absorb it more, especially when it comes to the Straw Hat crew, the people that we care about the most in this story? Yeah. Whoo! Ah, man, episode 982 was outstanding. And an arc that was already built different compared to the vast majority of the series, without question. Wano Country Anime continues to be over the top, and this episode was absolutely phenomenal. This is, once again, Arguably one of the best episodes in the entire series of One Piece. But I could be going over the top myself. Let me know your stance on the topic at hand. And let me know your favorite scenes, because I'm curious. Let me know your favorite scenes of this episode. Um, like, give me your top five. Your top five, okay? I'm going to see y'all later. You guys and gals, peace out. Have a nice one.